Hey guys, welcome back to Release to Craft in Purcell here with another episode of Storycraft. And if you guys missed last week's episode where I did the Black Eyed Children, uh, check out the playlist below to catch up on that. But you might not know if you missed it that we're doing Tales of the Paranormal. That is the theme for July all the way through Halloween because the people have demanded it and so does Priscilla a little bit low key. Yeah, totally. So we're doing spooky stories um, from now till Halloween. Because, of course, it's spooky season, so that's what we do. Um, everyone knows July 5th is the start of spooky season, and that goes all the way through uh, November 1st. So, and Christmas, if you're cool. But, <laughs> at any rate, since we're in spooky season, I thought it'd be fun to share you guys some of my favorites, um, some of the things that are new to me, but spooky stories, uh, folklore, mythology, urban legends, cryptids, monsters, uh not just the paranormal, but also the extraterrestrial, <laughs> the unsolved, and the true accounts of some pretty spooky shit. So, if you would like to hear that, stay tuned. If you would like to hear a certain story, leave that in the comments below, because I am always accepting requests, and if we're going to make it all the way through October, I'm going to need your guys' requests. So definitely drop some of those down there in the, in the comments. Do the things. Um... But at any rate, without further ado, today's story, we're going to hit on a little bit of monstrous folklore. I'm going to tell you guys about Black Annis. And I want you guys to just sort of take a deep breath. I'm going to read you an excerpt from a poem. I can't say excerpt to you guys. I've been trying to say it like 12 times now. I'm not, I'm not re-recording anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I insist on using excerpt because I can't say it. Um, but we're, we're just going with it. So nobody judge me. I... I'm doing my best. Um, but I'm going to read you a bit of this poem by John Hayrick, which was given in full in County Folklore in 1895. And it's specifically about Black Annis. To said the soul of mortal man recoiled, to view Black Annis's eyes so fierce and wild, vast talons foul with human flesh, there grew in place of hands, and features livid blue glared in her visage, whilst her obscene waist warm skins of human victims close embraced. Not without terror they cave survey, where they hung the monstrous trophies of her sway, to said that in her rock large rooms were found scooped with her claws beneath the flinty ground. And you might be like, what does that mean? What are you telling me here? This is just a little bit of like some of the earliest literature we have on Black Annis. And I want you to picture this. It's the dead of night in the quiet English countryside village of Leicester, um, in County Leicestershire, and or Leicestershire. I learned how to pronounce it today. Thank you, Joy. And I still pronounced it wrong. <laughs> Fuck my life. Uh, at any rate, it's the dead of night. And from the shadows of the trees outside your window, you see a shape emerge. And as you watch, you realize it's a cloaked figure. And as it gets closer to your home, you realize it's not just any cloaked figure. It's the cloaked figure of an old woman, stooped with age. And you think it might be a trick of the light. A little bit of the moonlight may be playing off her skin because it appears to be blue. But then as you look, you realize it's not just a little bit tinged blue. No, her skin is the blue color of mold and decay. And at the end of her fingers are sharp metal claws, sturdier stronger, sharper than anything you possibly could have in your home. And as she looks up to you, as you peer down at her through the window, you see that she only has one eye in her wrinkled face. This is Black Annis, and she's on a mission. So as you retreat into the shadows, hoping that she didn't actually make eye contact with you, that she didn't spy you through the windows, lest you be next, she moves away, farther away from your home, across the fields towards the houses that make up the city in pursuit of her favorite prey, the children of Leicester. You cower away from the windows lest you end up in addition to her foul belt, which is festooned with the skins of her victims. This is Black Annis. And Black Annis, as um, I just described, is usually how she is mo like, often depicted. That is her most common depiction. There's not a lot of variation there. 
sources all seem to agree that she is an old woman with blue skin, one eye, and metal claws. And she uses those claws to dig into the earth, but also to reach unnaturally into your home and snatch your children out there. Other sources say that she doesn't reach into your home. She actually waits in the old oak tree that's above her bower for children to pass by so she can take those razor sharp claws, reach down and snatch them up when they run by her tree, which to me is a bad hunting strategy because eventually everyone's gonna know not to go by that fucking tree. That being said, those are some of her stories. I think it's creepier that she crawls around the village at night and then reaches in through open windows to snatch up children. Um, and you'll see why I think that is the most proper, the, the best version of her story, um, why it makes the most sense farther on. We're going to get there. But it's important to note that she wouldn't just reach down and snatch up these kids and then gobble them up. No, 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 no. The horrors don't end there. There's no quick deaths for Black Annis. This is like victims. She'd use her sharp claws to skin her victims alive content warning content warning uh, um and then she would hang them up by their feet in the branches of her oak tree and then she would take their skin lovingly set it out to dry and then return back to her victims to slowly eat away at their flesh while they were still twitching alive skinned from her tree and then when the skins were dry, she would use them as decorations in her little bower, or she'd hang them from her belt like some kind of sick, twisted trophy. So where where did Black Annis come from? The earliest record, um, like on paper, of Black Annis is in 1764 um, from a deed that describes a piece of land known as Black Annie's Bower Close. And this bower was a cave that was dug into the ground beneath a mighty oak tree um, that was known locally to be her place of re like residence. And there's lots of speculation about her true origin, um, with opinions ranging from like malevolent spirit to forgotten goddess to a maligned local woman. Um, Agnes Scott is said to be one such woman. Having passed in 1455, she's memorialized by a plaque at St. Leonard's Church. Um, she was believed to either be an anchoress or a Dominican nun who may have been running a leper's colony. And I'm not going to blame you guys, but maybe some of you, because some of my friends are really smart, already know this. But some of you guys might be like little dum-dums like me and not know what an anchoress is. And apparently an anchoress is like an offshoot of... Uh, the Christian faith and would basically be the term used for somebody who loved like who lived like a quiet ascetic hermetic like lifestyle um, off on their own quietly in observance of God so that's what an anchoress is so she was either an anchoress or a Dominican nun um, running a leper colony there's not a lot of evidence to say that she was a Dominican nun or an anchoress or running a leper colony that may or may not have existed. Um, that seems to be maybe something that got added into her story later on because there's not anything left documented about her beyond that plaque at the church. So it's more like hearsay and legends that have grown over time saying like, oh, she used to be this like sweet hermit living in a cave out in the woods because she did live in a cottage or a cave out in the woods in Dane Hills. And looking at the time that we're talking about, 1455, it's not surprising that a woman who lived alone became the subject of, like, talk around the town. Um, because literally all of the witch hunts start with stuff like this. <laughs> that woman is alone, independent, and she doesn't like me. Therefore, something's wrong with her. So... Instead of going witch this time, they said evil demonic spirit. And that tracks um, for the time. <laughs> Not that it's like the best solution. But uh, the strange thing about this is that Dane Hills, where um, Agnes Scott resided, is actually a couple miles away from Leicester. And um, it doesn't make any sense that her legend would travel that far because it's kind of a local little tiny legend. So, like, it doesn't make sense that her story would go all the way out there. It seems to be something that they sort of um, pieced together over time, like historians or scholars did, and made big connections because, like, stories would travel, of course, but, um, like, this one random story of the village, like, outcasts probably didn't get that far. 
Um, so it seems like the only connection between Agnes Scott and Black Annis is that they live in a cave and um, their names are kind of a little bit similar. Agnes, Annis, like there's a little bit of a tie there. Um, but it's very likely that the legend of Black Annis came way before Agnes Scott. Like it, it's an old story. It's got deep roots. It seems like it comes way like way, way before that. Um, Black Annis, interestingly, is almost uh, sometimes called cat Annis, and in some stories she can appear as a black cat or shapeshift herself into a huge black cat um this idea might actually come from a crueler tradition serious content warning animal cruelty skip ahead like 30 seconds um where a dead cat would be soaked in like aniseed oil and dragged behind a horse in front of the bower that was supposed to be black Annis's home um in like a mock hunt format where um they would like chase this cat on like horses um with all their hunting like dogs and um scholars don't really know why <laughs> like they know that they did this and it was a tradition but they aren't really sure why there's some speculation that it might have been in like an early pagan ritual it may have been some kind of like ward to like keep black annis from emerging from her cave um but they're not really sure about the origin of this tradition and because stuff didn't get written down nobody was like hey by the way we do this crazy thing that's really mean to cats for no reason um because of such and such nobody wrote it down so again some more speculation here on the origin of black annis and some of the things associated with her um there seems to be a tie between black annis and the celtic goddess danu who's also known as anu like anu annis it's not far um it's kind of a weird take because if you are familiar with Celtic mythology, you'll know that Black Annis has more in common with the physical traits of the Kaliak and um, Celtic witches. Feel free to weigh in here because I'm not super versed in Celtic mythology. Um, so it may very well be possible that Black Annis is like the local version of the Kaliak or like some sort of offshoot of that mythology or... Um, also maybe something like just as old as the Kaliak, like way far back um where she might just be a local deity and her story and roots have been lost over time and the legend has gone from being a goddess to a monster demon thing um that all being said, the legend of Black Annis in her monstrous form actually endures all the way up to present day, but not in the same form or monstrosity form um, necessarily, but there's ties. Like, this story didn't die out as time goes on. People are still talking about this, just not in the same way of, like, old woman who snatches kids out of windows. That story has sort of died back a bit, especially after, like, World War I, that, that has sort of died back. But they're still talking about her, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that, too. It's important to note that um, it's been reported, and it's hard to sort of trace this one back, too. Um, there is a, a book written by an author whose last name is Tung, uh, where she got an account from children who were being evacuated from uh, Leicester during World War I, um, who would tell her that... Uh, Homes in Leicester were built with small windows um, and fireplaces that were far away, like way back in a corner, so that the families could huddle around the fire and wait for Black Annis to pass them by, but like the tiny windows, so she couldn't reach in or she couldn't see them in there. And then, you know, they built their fireplaces far away from the windows so that they could, you know, hunker around the fire and stay warm while not being exposed potentially to being snatched up by Black Annis. Uh, it was also common for protective herbs to be hung above a window frame uh, to keep Black Annis from reaching inside. So shout out to witchcraft, um, protecting us all the time, always. And it wasn't unheard of to have special window coverings like animal skins or fabric to actually block off the windows completely um, so that Black Annis wouldn't reach in through the windows at night. Um, and these pra like practices all erupted from the fear of Black Annis. And it wasn't long until parents were telling their children that, like, you had to behave lest Black Annis come snatch you away and eat you. And considering her preferred method of feasting, this seems especially cruel. Uh, but as we know, um, old time parents gave zero fucks about the mental well-being of their children because 
they were like, she's not just going to take you away and eat you. She's going to skin you, hang you from a tree, and then nibble at you when she's got like a little, when she's feeling a little famished. Terrifying. Um, some stories say that the cave that she dug out underneath that oak tree was part of a portal to the underworld or connected to an underground network of caves that led into Lester proper. And I just want to say, like, as an aside, um, the underworld connection is really fascinating to me, but I couldn't find a lot about it um like concrete and it makes me a little disappointed because I'm like was it the underworld like as like most westerns would acknowledge underworld being like hell or is it like the underworld like another world like was this a portal to the fey realms and was she just like some kind of dark fey spirit who would emerge from this tunnel feast on children and go back to the fey realm I don't know I want to know (laughs) but I don't know um at any rate, these tunnels that possibly connected to Lester proper were said to run all the way up to and underneath Lester Castle. And um, sightings of her were very common at Lester Castle and around Prince Rupert's gates. Um, and they were characterized by rolling black mist and seeing a dark figure in dark garments. Um, and it was said that she would snatch people up around Saint, like uh, Prince Rupert's gates. So... It's possible that Black Annis uh, would use tunnels underneath the town to find her victims and drag them down, which is also terrifying because now it's like she's not just walking around in the middle of the night. She's underground. Like, she could be anywhere. (laughs) She could come up anywhere and she could snatch you away and you'd never know where, like, to go because she disappeared underground. Um, Surprisingly, but not surprisingly, it's not that surprisingly. Um, it's possible that Black Annis is a really large Black Panther that had been, like, set loose in the countryside, which connects her story back to Cat Annis. And this is the way in which her story persists to this day. Um, because when I researched this theme and some of the requests that I've gotten, there's actually quite a few giant spectral cat stories in England. So look forward to an episode on that, because I didn't know that was a thing until I started looking this stuff up. And now I'm excited to share it with you guys. Um, But there's actually quite a few sightings of a large black cat in the area all the way up until like 2021 most recently. Um, And there's like video footage of it. Not good video footage. It's as as per usual when it comes to this stuff. It's potato quality footage of a large black creature possibly dragging away the body of another animal to like eat. Um, It doesn't make a lot of sense to have like a pack of panthers roaming the countryside. But I do like the idea of, like, maybe a monstrous, otherworldly, demonic, giant black cat out there just snatching people up since the early 1400s, if not earlier. (laughs) And um, if you were wondering, nowadays the oak tree that um, was above the bower has been cut down and the cave has been totally filled in. It's actually somebody's backyard now, which, like, gross. Um, You wouldn't catch me living there. Um, For all of the obvious reasons, you can't tell me, like, oh yeah, there's a cave on your property, and it used to be the home of this demonic creature who would come out and, like, snatch up children at night. I'd be like, nah, I'm not not living there. Um, So that cave has been filled in. It's in somebody's backyard. Um, The oak tree is gone, and the sightings of Black Annis have slowed down, if not essentially stopped altogether, um, minus the stories of the giant black cat, which are constantly being tied back to her legend, Um, at least for now. Because you never know, they might dig that cave up and we might get some more black anise all over again. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for you guys today on the subject of black anise. Um, this spooky mythological legendary um, old lady who, of course, like most old ladies in folklore and fairy tales, gets demonized for being elderly. So like, also, I don't think that helps because... Um, if you weren't a single woman, you were a single old woman, and that was worse in the witchcraft, like, brain mindset. The witch hunt trials, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. The witch trials, like, mindset, it was one thing to be, like, a female and alone, but another thing to be female alone and elderly, and it's, there's a lot of, like, elder hate in fairy tales and folklore and stuff like that. So, it seems like this might be the story of either a poor innocent woman who just grew old and passed away and they were like, ah, she lived by herself, I hate that. Or this is a story of something much darker, much spookier, whose like pathway 
to Earth has been like cut off by the filling up of the bower. Or maybe she has continued to survive as a spectral black cat haunting the countryside. I don't know. I um, definitely don't want to meet her at any point in time, and I will not be lingering in my windows for quite a while. Uh, let me know what you guys thought, though, about the story of Black Annis. Um, do you have any, like, experiences with this story? Do you know it? Um, I know I have quite a few viewers over there in England, so, like, are you guys familiar with this one? I don't know. This one was um, very interesting to me, and I wanted to share it because I thought it was sort of a really cool story that I had never heard. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate your faces. And I will catch you all in the next one. Till then, happy crafting. Bye!